get into this, this listening part, man, the, the, this is such an interesting topic in healthcare, in healthcare, let alone the front desk world, right? And front desk success. So I want to, I, I want to start with why th- there's so much around expectations. You guys hear me talk about expectations every single week. If a week goes by and I don't talk about expectations, I want you to please report me to the proper authorities. Okay. Expectations are key. And what you have to remember is when someone is calling you in your practice for the first time to possibly become a patient, because when they call you, they're calling as a potential patient, client, customer, they're not your patient, right? When they call you, they're bringing expectations with them around all kinds of things. And what you have to remember is they're also bringing expectations around listening. You tell me about your last experience of calling a healthcare practice, of then arriving, of then sitting in the room with the provider. You tell me how the listening portion went, right? Those expectations are brought with them to their their experience with you. If they've had no experience with you, they're bringing their expectations and experience from other healthcare providers and other healthcare practices, their front desk people, their billing people, their providers, their offices, their physical space, they're all of it, okay? And so you have to remember that. So when we talk about this word listening, it is a far greater asset than can you can possibly manage imagine. And it's so interesting how we all personally go through this shit every day with every experience we have, yet we will turn around and allow the same bullshit experience that we hate to happen in our businesses because we don't apply it. So what I want you to think about again is what is that experience they're bringing with listening, right? Listening is an asset at this time. Listening can make you money. Listening creates more trust. Listening creates and builds better expectations. If you're listening on the first phone call, then the expectation is it's going to be a better experience. If you're listening on the first phone call, your expectation is this place is different. If you're listening on the first phone call, the expectation is you will listen and that probably everybody in the business and practice will listen. And because listening is an asset, then you're building up, right? You're building up trust. And again, the asset is financial. Let's be honest here, whatever, however freaking many minutes we're in. Yet it's the trust that we're building in this early phase two of your patient life cycle that is going to return the greatest ROI. And as I've mentioned, it is missing from healthcare. And when you deliver it and when you listen, it will be noted. And this is what's always interesting when people talk about expectations and clients experience and everything else and exceeding expectations. I'm like, do you understand what the expectation is that you must succeed, exceed? It's such a low bar. It's such a low bar. So actually picking up the phone and saying, hello, my name is Jerry, ABC Physiotherapy. Hello, my name is Jerry. How can I help you? Yeah. Hi, Jerry. I have low back pain and I'd like to get scheduled for physical therapy. Well, I'm glad you called us here today at ABC Physiotherapy. I'm so sorry to hear about your low back pain, but we can definitely help you. In case you missed it, my name's Jerry, and I can definitely help you get scheduled. If you don't mind me asking, what is your name? It's Mike. Well, hello, Mike. Again, sorry to hear you have the low back pain, but I'm happy you found us here at ABC Physiotherapy. That alone right there is exceeding just about every fucking expectation anybody ever has with calling a healthcare office. So don't get caught up in this exceeding expectations and building wow experiences right now, right? I've got experience books back there and I've got books about building wow experiences. And I'm like, man, writing that wow experience healthcare book is about five pages long. So don't overthink this. Don't overdo it. Do the basics well. Do the basics well. Answer the phone properly. Listen to people. Manage and set expectations. Build trust throughout their entire life cycle with your practice. And of course, the earlier on we build trust and manage and set expectations and deliver, the greater trust we can build. We're building an asset here, people. And that asset is trust. By the way, you know the beauty of building the asset that's trust. So think about money. If I build up a savings account, 
and I have to get roof work. I have money built. I have money saved to take care of that, right? If I'm building trust during someone's experience and that person has to take a withdrawal, meaning we fuck it up and we, we do something that diminishes the trust, the more trust we have built up, then can't we afford to take a little hit? Yep. And then we start going up again. But when there is no trust built and you chip away at it, again, this, um, this is a simple mindset. It is a simple process, yet it must be a process. It must be systematized, just like the compassion and caring. I won't find anybody in healthcare that says they're not compassionate and caring. And I say, show me how that's exhibited and done throughout your patients and potential patients' entire life cycle in your company. And you can't show me. Okay, so you can be, you can talk about compassion and caring. You can tell me what your intent is. But the only thing that truly says, here, here's something you got to mark. The only thing you can truly say, right? The only way you can truly prove it is by doing it. And let me tell you what I just did in that intro on the phone call is doing it. So if you tell me you're compassionate and caring and I hang up the phone with your office and you've scheduled me for physical therapy at 1030 on Thursday with a physical therapist, you are not compassionate and caring. Your actions speak louder than your words. So when I start on that first phone call and I say, I want to hear about your story and I listen to your story and I repeat it back to you, the repeating back part is the action that says I actually care. Asking for your story is not the only part of it. So let's talk about this listening part because this listening is huge. And then when they arrive, listening. Then when they see the provider, listening, right? This is huge. You must see listening as an asset in your business. You must understand that listening is not done in the bulk of healthcare and the expectations around that are low and that it is a skill that must be taught and practiced and managed in a manner to do what? Build trust. And that speaking about listening, speaking about compassion and caring is only one step on that journey. The only way to actually exhibit compassion and caring is the action of doing. You've got to look at your front desk, right? This front desk team member that picked up the phone, right? As a leader in your company, because we're going to trust in them. We're going to put our trust in them by hiring them and putting them through the proper training and onboarding process. We're going to put our trust in them to grow our business, to be the voice of the company, to be the first point of contact in our company. And if we don't do all that and we hire someone to get people scheduled, the action, remember, the only way to show the compassion and caring is the action. When someone calls you and you haven't hired and trained and onboarded the proper person, it's your fault, not theirs, then the actions of caring and compassion aren't coming through. There is no listening. There is no managing and setting expectations. There is no building of trust. There is no asset built along this journey. So you must understand that they are a leader that you must entrust with your values and all the skills that you need them to act upon to start a person on their journey with your practice. And to do all these things that are needed to show them that you should be trusted. I cannot emphasize this enough. The beauty of listening and your front desk team member who is right by the way, this, this content comes from the sales world. This content comes from the sales world. This is not a, a sales without being salesy world. If you're worried about being salesy, don't do sales and just keep doing the same shit you're doing. If you want to learn how to be really good at this, learn from the great salespeople who aren't salesy and quit emphasizing that it sells without being salesy. All that matters is it sells. And it fits here perfectly. And all this information that I've already said comes from the sales world. And all great businesses do this. And if you're afraid of being salesy, then continue doing what you're doing. Because when we do this listening, the ultimate objective of this listening on the first phone call during phase two to build this trust, this asset, is we want to lead people down this path to their solution. The key term is their solution. And the only way I can take someone down a path is they have to show us the path. I can only lead them down the path if they show me the path. How do I do that? I do that by listening, by getting what they want from us. 
And then by listening, I can ask better questions to further us down that path. And the path on this first phone call is last week's talk, making sure they understand how what they need fits into what we can deliver. And so I'm walking them down this path. As they're telling me their story, I'm taking them forward on a path with our business, with our company. And I can only do that if I'm listening. Because the only way I can tell you if we are the right fit for you, right, by sharing our quality and what we can deliver for you is I have to be listening to what you want from us. If we don't work with CrossFit athletes and we don't do much exercise in our space, then I'm leading you down the path for both of us to say, you know what, I appreciate your time, Mike, but we're not going to be the right fit for you. I also lead you down the path that if we are the right fit for you, I fill in all the things we can do for you to get you back to CrossFit and to get rid of that morning pain. I tell you about, right? I learn what you want and what you expect. So I can tell you about the expert that's going to be seeing you and what you're going to get and how much it's going to cost you. You then make a choice. So I listened. I asked better questions. I listened. I ask better questions. I acknowledge, I acknowledge, I acknowledge. I make sure I know what you want from us. I make sure I understand what you need, your expectations. I make sure you understand what you, who you will be seeing, sorry, and what you will get. And for what price? I ask you when you want to get started, you tell me we have that availability. That's part of it. I'm leading you down this path to then say, okay, Mike, what do you want to do? I'm Maybe you don't schedule. Maybe you say it's too expensive. But the only way I can lead you down the path to the solution you need with us is by listening and asking better questions. If you tell me you need physical therapy, and I say, cool, for what? Low back pain? Cool. Right? We're not going down a very good path here because anybody could be a solution for you. Are we the solution for you? If I then ask you what insurance you have, and I tell you, yeah, we're in network with them. Again, what does that tell me about how we are the right fit for you and the solution you need? It doesn't. So if I'm asking you what's your diagnosis, what do you need, physical therapy, and if what insurance you have, I'm not, what do we do? We took two steps down a path that's maybe 100 steps long. So I'm bringing you only so far, and then I'm saying, great, let's get you scheduled. Now, it's funny, if I follow back up with that person afterwards, I'd say, you know, what solution are you looking for? Is this the right fit for you? Well, they have physical therapy. Well, what solution are you looking for? Yeah, right? I want to get back to CrossFit. Have they worked with CrossFitters before? I don't know. Have they helped CrossFitters before? I don't know. Who are you seeing? I don't know. What will you be getting during that evaluation? Right? What is the solution they're offering you? Physical therapy. You can see where we're going with this, right? So that solution can be offered anywhere on top of everything else. By the way, the Cairo is offering that solution. The massage therapist is offering that solution. The acupuncturist is offering that solution, right? Everybody's offering that solution, right? So you must take them down a path to offer them their solution. And the only way you can do that is to listen, acknowledge, and then ask better questions. By the way, when you listen and acknowledge, again, I said this at the beginning and I want to reemphasize this, is you're building trust. So even at the end, if they say this isn't going to work for me, schedule, price, whatever, whatever they talk about, then you know you gave them all the information they needed and they're going to be thankful for that. And maybe you help them find the next place, right? The right fit for them. So then, again, we still have had a positive experience right? Trust was still built. They trust you now. Why? Because you talk to them like nobody else, because you gave them your time and energy when nobody else has, right? By what? By listening and acknowledging. Again, this listening is a skill that's lacking in healthcare. It's an asset. It can be hired, trained, and measured. This is that whole, why will they arrive thing, right? If at the end of a phone call, I ask, that front desk person, why will they arrive? And they repeat back to me some notes and some things they heard, then I know they're listening. But if someone asks for physical therapy at 1030 on Thursday, and they tell me that's why they'll arrive again, 
did we get the information we needed for a solution for them? No, because we weren't listening because we were checking boxes. We were getting date of birth. We were getting addresses. We were getting diagnosis. We were getting referral source. We were getting insurance information because by the way, that's what everybody else does, right? Which is a big mistake. But what everybody else doesn't do is they don't listen and make it about them. Right. What you got to remember when you pick that phone up, the person on the other end is thinking me, me, me. So how are you making it about them, them, them? Right. Again, the only way you can do this is listen and ask better questions and lead them down this path to their solution with you that they have a choice to make at the end of. Right. You basically lead them down the path all the way to the end and then they got the yes or the no way to go. Right. Do we get scheduled? Do we say yes? Or do we say no? No can still bring us back to the yes. Because if I did all this work and they say no, I'm going to have an easier time dealing with the objections. Because I know everything about them. I know what they need and want from us. I listened and I acknowledged. So I know everything they want. So I know how we're a right fit with what they're going to get and who they're going to see based on their wants and their needs, right? And what they expect. And when I say their, their needs, it's what they expect, right? But we have to ask what they will expect. We have to find out what they want. And the only way we can do that is listening and asking better questions. This is it. I think it ties well into last week. The listening is the way to do all that stuff we covered last week. You have to see this first phone call as a path to a solution and the only way we can walk that person down that path is by learning more about them because it's the path. Here's your takeaway. It's the path they have to show you. Oh, great. Yeah, let me take you down this path. Which one do you want to go down? This one, right? And you can't see the end of that path. So you have to keep asking questions so you can keep moving down that path. The other big takeaway here is that listening is a poorly set expectation outside of your business because you're going to be a better listener now. So people aren't expecting much. So if you do this, it's a huge value add. The other thing, the big takeaway, the third thing is this talk of being, you know, caring and compassionate is useless, is fruitless without the actual action of caring and compassion. And that's the systems and the process for doing all this. I've shared this weekly and I'll say it with you guys again, my 10 point checklist is the way to make sure your team is focused on the right things, that they're listening for the right things. So if you want that 10-point checklist, give it away every week here. Just comment down below 10-point checklist or you want the checklist. Because the 10-point checklist actually turns your team into better listeners. Because all I do is go back through and go, okay, what did you get here? What did you get here? Did you ask the right question? And part of the 10-point checklist is getting the data you need to put them in the EMR too. All right. So, I mean, it's all there. It's all there. Yet there's a better way to ask for that data. And there's a better way to acknowledge that you need that, that reflects back on the person on the other end of the phone. Right. And that's what that 10 point checklist is all about. So cool. Listening. It's an asset. It's a lost skill. It's missing in healthcare. It's a value add. It's a huge asset that helps you build even a greater asset, which is trust. And like I said earlier, the more trust you have built from the first day, the better, right? You're building a bank of trust. That's why it's an asset. It's got an ROI on it, right? The ROI is more trust and more trust and more trust because you're listening. Oh yeah, Jerry. Right. You know, it's cool when you think about listening, when someone tells you their expectations and then you tell them, yeah, that's what's going to happen here. Oh, right. The big trust built, big expectation set. All right. If you want that 10 point checklist so you can start managing this and making sure people are listening for the right things and asking the better questions that lead you to these things that build trust, then just comment down below. Otherwise, have an awesome Tuesday and I hope you stay warm wherever the hell you are. Cheers.